All right, guys. This one's kind of actually kind of hard to get into the shot. Uh, the box is so so big. Um, so as you know, um, I love RC cars, and I used to have a Clodbuster. Uh, technically, still have one, and I'll get to that explanation in just a second. Um, but first, uh, whoops, sorry about the glare. Decided to go ahead and get the black edition this time. I just like the black body. And, you know, it just, it looks cool. I think it looks neat. What I'll do is I'll give you the quick explanation to why I have a Cloudbuster, but I don't have a Cloudbuster right now. And then we'll go in and dive into the box. And I'm not going to take everything out of the box. I'm just going to show a few things off. And then we'll get to the build. So this thing <laughs> is my original Cloudbuster. Um, this happened sometime, probably late 90s. Um early 2000s when you know rock crawlers first came around and people were coming up with inventive ways of making something off the shelf do something it was never intended to do so real quick i custom made a twin vertical plate chassis um it's just flat aluminum stock cut it out drilled it um made some custom links with carbon fiber shafts um Took the original front and rear axles, made a servo on axle steering. Um, I only got around to doing one, so the rear steering is actually locked. Um, I can set this up for rear steering, just never have. Uh, basically, by the time I got it working, um, you know, there's all kinds of geometry issues with it and everything. But it worked for a while. Um, it was what we did. Got some 55 turn uh, lathe motors on it, like we used to use. Uh, custom mount brackets that capture the end of the link right before the... Uh, shaft. So it's got a tremendous amount of, of flex. I mean, it's the can of stack of Coke cans flex in it, but you know, that's not really what works the best, but it's what we had back in the day. Um, I would take it and bring it back to original. I still have the body, but unfortunately the chassis and the shocks and bumpers and everything else that goes with it, I had nicely boxed up. And when we moved from our old house to this house, I decided, you know, I'm never going to put that truck back together. And I threw the whole box away. And now I want to put the whole truck back together. So that's where we arrived at the new Cloudbuster kit. All right, so we're in the box. I'm sure many people have seen pictures of Cloudbusters. A lot of you may own them. If you don't own one, this is one of Tamiya's biggest kits. And certainly back in the late 80s, uh, mid to late 80s, this was the kit of kits. Um, it wasn't much cheaper then than it is now. So this was a very prized kit and it's something not a lot of kids could afford. So a lot of us kids back then would just sit here and drool at the pictures of the magazines uh, versus actually having one. Real quick, I wanna start with the tires just to give you a size comparison because I mean, it looks like a box of truck parts. This is the Cloudbuster tire. This is the tire off of my Hornet. So it almost fits inside the wheel in the wheel opening, and it's like maybe a third the width. So these are Mondo tires. Same thing with the rims, and these rims are gorgeous. Let me take one out real quick. This is kind of what sold me on the kit. I hope the camera's picking that up, but it's like a black chrome finish on there. Looks really super cool. Um, but yeah, rim almost the same outside down diameter as the tire. And again, two tires wide, they're just enormous. And that's the draw to this kit. It's a big four wheel drive, four wheel steering kit. Um, a lot of molded parts, so it is a hard plastic body. Um, this one has the pre-finished black. Um, enormous bathtub chassis. Um, whew, shiny, shiny silver decals. Twin 540 motors about a pound of hardware in that. Um, these are your outer drive cups. No, these are the spindles, I believe. Yeah, front rear spindle. You've got your um, heavy cast chrome parts, front rear bumper, roll bar pieces. Obviously the wheels are chrome, the black chrome plated. Um, again, another pound, pound and a half of hardware. Uh, gear sets. Um, it does have a dual motor uh, electronic speed control in here. 
um, eight shock springs, eight shocks. Um, this is a this is a, a chunky chunky truck with lots of bits and pieces. So first kit recommendations, no. I don't think this is a great first kit just because there's a lot of steps and a lot of hardware. If I remember, there's like 10 bags of hardware for this overall. Um, so yeah, not the most user friendly for a first one, but if you've had a kit together, a uh, kit or two together, you know, have at it. It's not difficult. There's just a lot of steps. Big chrome blower for the top of the hood, all the chrome lights. Um, actually, it looks like it's got two different blower versions. Um, molded tailgate, lens covers for the headlight of the roll bar. You've got the smoked uh, side and rear window, front window. So this just bolts in, gives you the sunroof, all your windows, a nice smoke version. Then you have your really bright red shocks, bumpers, and suspension arms. So that kind of gives it a little bit of splash of color in there. Uh, more chassis pieces, battery tray, uh, chassis plate. Then you have two sets of the gearboxes and parts for the front and rear. So these are motor on axles. So the motor actually bolts in on the housing of the uh, transmission. And then you have the two axle tubes that come off of the center transmission. So you have a front motor driving the front wheels, rear motor driving the rear wheels. So again, that's why this kit was so sought after back in the day. You couldn't stop it. And then you have uh, the trailer arms, uh, suspension mounts, the body posts. And I think that's pretty much it. So there's not a, a lot of pieces oh, in your axle tubes and uh, enough uh, spindle or turny bits. The words escape me. Um, but yeah, not a lot of, well, there is a lot of parts, but there's a lot of repetitive parts. So there's eight shocks and, you know, the front and rear are almost identical. They're just reverse of each other. So it's a lot of repetitive steps. You know, you're building a whole front differential housing, transmission, um, front ax axle case, everything. But once you build one, you'll know exactly how to build the other. Um, so should be fairly straightforward. I mean, I built one before, so I know what I'm doing on this. But, you know, again, this is another throwback to my childhood. You know, Adam's reliving his, his past. Call it my midlife crisis, whatever you want. I'm enjoying it, so that's all that matters. But we're going to get this off the bench, and we'll start putting it together. Of course, I'm going to do it on time lapse. If not, this will be a three-day video. Um, I'll probably take my time with this, so this may be a time lapse over a couple days. So you may see different shirts and different hats. and Well, you're never going to see a different hat. I always wear that hat. But anyway, we'll get this off the bench. We'll start getting it put together, and we'll see you after the time lapse to see the finished product.
guys, welcome back. So, sorry about the end of the time lapse. We didn't get the, the body and everything in there. Uh, fortunately, the memory card got full or the battery died in the GoPro, so um, lost the tail end of the video. But anyway, here's the finished kit. We got everything put together, decal. Now, the purist out there um, will notice there are a few extra little decals. So, the ones back here, the, basically all the sponsor decals that we put on there, um, they're, they're not in the kit. And I got all the decals on one. Um, these chromy uh, Mylar decals, yeah, take your time with those. And the, the key I found is to stretch those out as you're putting them on. So basically get it kind of lined up, get one end started, and pull it tight and lay it down when the sticker's tight. On the, the regular vinyl ones, if you do that, it'll distort them and kind of twist them. On these, you almost have to, because if you don't, it almost leaves a textured finish to it. Once you stretch them out, it actually will lay them down nice and flat. Um, first time I've dealt with the, the reflective kind of Mylar stickers, um, they are fiddly as hell cutting them out. Um, this, use a straight edge to cut these nice straight lines. Um, the problem is, is no matter what light you're in or what angle you're at, you can't tell where you're cutting. It's a best guess scenario. Um, thankfully, they have a little black border around there. It kind of gives you a little wiggle room. But yeah, the, the cutting these out were fiddly. Um, getting them on wasn't bad. I was really nervous about that because they're so thin that I was worried about tearing them. But actually, they're fairly durable and you can, like I said, put a good stretch on them. So back to these little sponsor stickers. Um, so. All you purists, to me, you guys, please look away. Um, that is the sticker kit I got, and yes, it's Traxxas. Um, but it's actually a nice decal sheet of, you know, common sponsors. And I got it just to have it on hand, but, you know, once I got all the decals on here, it just, it felt too plain. Like, this is a monster truck. This should have some, some sponsor decals on there and stuff like that. So that's why I went ahead and added some of them, just to fill in some of the blank spots, because, you know, the giant black body, it, it, it just needed something. It needed a little bit extra color to pop. Um, I did not paint the body. This is actually the plastic color as cast. Um, the reason I did that is because I felt, you know, if this does get scratched up, I don't plan on running it much, but, you know, if this does get scratched up, or later down the road, I want to change it up. Um, I can just take the heat gun, pull the stickers off of it, give it a light sand, and paint it whatever color I want. Um, I wouldn't have to worry about stripping paint. And the plastic actually looks really, really good. The only thing, there was a few little, I guess, mold marks or stretch marks from the mold or whatever. It, you, you can't feel them, but you can see them. But those stickers cover those up nicely. And there's two spots on the hood, and I put those... Um, Chrome Tamiya decals on there. It's where the the boss for that mount is. Um, you can kind of see the little cross molded into the hood, I guess. Um, so real quick, there's some fiddly things on here that I just wanted to address as I was putting together, I noticed. So in the instructions, it basically tells you to throw all the motor wires and everything down to the side inside of this hole. Um, the problem with that is you have the servo horn down there rotating. You've got those linkages moving back and forth. And, you know, it's putting everything down there mashed into that. So, you know, as you're turning back and forth, it could wear on these. So I made sure to route them to where they're away from the links as they come up through. And it's really hard to see. But basically there's a hole in the tub where they come up through. And I route them to the inside so they would stay away from the links. Um, I do want to tie this one back. Um, one other thing, when you're mounting your radio system, you guys may want to ignore what is in the um, thing, because basically it tells you to mount the, the ESC here and the uh, receiver there. I went ahead and stuck it in, and I'm going to leave it as is, but the antenna mount is back here, which on a 2.4 gigahertz system, and as far away as I'm driving this thing, this will work. But as you can see, with the short antenna, you know, I can't even really get it into the mount, which again, isn't a big deal. I've just kind of got it tucked in there. It'll be fine for running around the yard. Like I said, I'm not gonna be racing this thing hundreds of yards away from me. Um, everything went together really well. There's only 
two things that I would say are gotcha moments on this build. And they are in the instruction manual. You really have to be paying attention to catch them. One is the servo saver. Um, as you can see, the servo saver on here points that way and it points that way. Well, when you're building this, you're basically building the front axle and the back axle at the same time because they're identical, except for that servo saver. On the front axle, it has to face, quote, the driver's side. And on the rear axle, the top of it has to face the driver's side. But when you're putting them together and you're making them identical, basically what happens is your back gets pointed to the passenger side because you made it a carbon copy of the front. And again, it's in the book. I missed it. But what will happen is obviously your steering isn't right, but you're also cocking that arm in the back way over. So once I got it put together and I got everything kind of mounted, I'm like, why are my back tires messed up? I know I made these links. What's in the book? Yeah, I screwed up. Um, the other thing is, and I knew about this going into it because I built one of these prior and I screwed it up then. And I also... Um, RC driver online posted a video of him building the exact same truck not three weeks ago two three weeks ago and he reminded me there is a tiny little nut inside of the rear end um, that you have to smash that nut into the little capture area into the plastic before you put the case halves together and assemble the case halves um, basically the reason I found out was I put the case halves together and I'm like where does this nut go did I miscount and then I went back to the instructions and said, oh, please note, don't forget this. And I forgot that. So I did, luckily I only did it in one case. I removed it out of the case and did the other one correctly. So I think those are the only two gotcha moments that you may have to look for, look for when you're building this is getting that nut in those cases before you put them together and the uh, servo saver uh, location. The only other pain of putting this together, uh, there's a lot of repetition, that's fine. Getting these links onto those ball studs without snapping the chassis in half is a terrifying thing. These things are really, really, really a pain in the butt to get on. Um, I ended up using the hammer method. <laughs> and probably not the best way, but it worked. Um, they give you this little stamp piece of steel that you're supposed to push on. Yeah, I felt like I was going to snap the whole chassis in half. Um, trying to get those those locked on just because you're putting so much force down on it it feels like you're just going to snap the whole chassis tub in half but that one obviously little kids probably aren't going to be able to do that one um so mom and dad's going to have to step in to help out on that but really the only thing with this kit is there's just so much hardware when you take it out of the bag it looks intimidating um get you some little parts trays um Tupperware tubs, egg cartons, anything you can do, um, and separate out your screws. It's a tedious, boring task, but you know it really speeds up the process of building this once you're into it and getting going. If you have everything separated out, um, the egg carton trick works great because you can write on it what what um, letter and number it is, like a B6 or, a, or whatever B4. Um, so. Definitely a good tip there, just to organize yourself before you even get started. I know how exciting it is to want to get going, um, but that's definitely something that will help you out in the long run, just because there's so much hardware in this. And as with a lot of Tamiya kits, yes, you'll have leftover hardware. Um, for some reason, it seems like you have a significant amount of leftover hardware. But I've triple checked everything. Everything is built. Everything is correct. Everything has a screw that needs a screw. It just, I guess old kit versus new kit. Um, I don't know whether some of them they're just doing by weight. But anyway, there are some leftover screws. Um, I really went thick on the grease in the front ends and rear ends um, just to make sure those stay lubed up. These things run super smooth. I got full bearings and everything. Um, uh, even though I'm not going to run it much, you know, I don't want to have to tear all of this back down to put bearings in it later. So it's best if you're even thinking about putting bearings in it, spend the 20 bucks, get the bearing set. Um, I got fast eddies for this, but there's a bunch of people out there that sell them. But yeah, it makes a, makes a world of difference. And, you know, when you're building this, you've got the tub and the axles put together, and it really doesn't look like much. As soon as you bolt these wheels on, the wheels and tires on, 
it really starts to look like something. Then it starts looking beefy. And then once you get the body on, you know, now that is classic Tamiya. Uh, just looks awesome. It's going to be a loud, clunky, bumpy, clanky thing with these shocks. Um, but, you know, again, this is retro. I, I This is from my childhood. Like I said, I had the one I tore apart and turned into my crawler. And I just wanted something to replace that. And it's a beefy, it's a beefy thing. You get these tires going. I'm not turning that. That's just the weight of those tires making that thing twist. But yeah, complete, absolute blast from the past. Monster truck. I love it. Um, I stopped putting stickers on there because I didn't want to get it sticker bound and just look like a, a, a wall of graffiti of stickers. But I think the extra ones that we added on here really make it look like that classic monster truck. You know, any race car is going to have sponsors on there, so why would this one be different? Um, so yeah, I'm going to take it out and run it for a little bit and just enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoyed the build process, kind of the whole review of it. Um, again, it's, a, it's an awesome classic monster truck. Um, with a little bit of, of new design uh, with the, the black body chrome stickers. Um, I, I, don't, I don't mind the blue one, but, you know, uh, this one kind of got me with the, the black and the red and the chrome and, you know, limited edition, even though it's limited to, you know, however many millions they're going to make. But, I don't know, I just thought it was cool and it's going to be a great addition to the collection. Oh, one other thing before I forget. These tires, um, I don't know if... if Ed at the tire station was just having a bad day or what, um, but there was an awful lot of flash all the way around on the outside of these that I had to trim off. There's still a few little high spots. I mean, they'll wear off, but since this is going to live a lot of its life on the shelf, you know, I went ahead and trimmed them down to make them look nice. The other thing is, since these tires are so massive and, you know, have such deep treads and everything, they put a lot of mold release on these tires so they can get them out of the mold without ruining tires. Um, when you get them, you'll notice a little bit of white kind of residue on there. And if you take your fingernail, you can literally scratch it and it just turns white. It just looks terrible. So I did take the time, took them inside, sink full of hot soapy water and a toothbrush and scrubbed them all down. Uh, get in between all the treads, um, the front and back of the treads, everything. It took maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes or so to get everything scrubbed out, get everything cleaned off. But... They look a million times better, and as they sit on the shelf, they won't slowly grow white and crusty with that, that residue because it will show up. Even if it doesn't look bad now, give it six months and it's sitting out, sitting outside of the box, and they'll start to kind of crust up and look funky. So cleaning those first before you mount them, um, big time saver overall, and it's going to make it look a whole lot better. Whether it's a shelf queen or you're going to take it out there, beat it up. I mean, if you're taking it out and beating it up, you probably won't worry about it. They're going to be muddy and dirty anyway. But since this one's only going to see some fun play around action every now and then, you know, I wanted to, to make sure that that residue wasn't going to mess up the experience. Well, again, guys, hope you liked it. Uh, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Uh, definitely like reading you guys' comments. Uh, helps me uh, just see that you guys are interested. You have commentary, uh, whether you think I did something stupid or whether you thought it was cool. Either way, uh, I'll take the care constructive criticism but everybody out there um have a wonderful spring enjoy yourselves be safe thanks <laughs>